didn't say it out loud. That's, that's different. Reverend Dr. Nancy Smith is a teacher, author, mentor, healer, Akashic medium, spirit artist, sister, mom, grandma, and friend. She loves to read, laugh, paint, draw, write, hike, and meditate. Reverend Nancy thrives on creating new ways to help people connect with spirit. All the way from Boston, here's my sister-in-law, Reverend Dr. Nancy Smith. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to hear, be here with all of you. Um, I'm gonna, as I talk, I want to explain that I'm I'm doing like half talk but half spirit inspired talk. That's how we were trained. Um, I love being in different spiritualism, this church, but I also feel like everyone's so different. I wanted to explain. So I have my notes here, but I also have what spirit would like for me to talk about. So as I was um, asking for guidance on what's the best thing to talk about, I, I came up with all kinds of ideas. And I will talk about the principles of three, four, and six. So we're gonna do, um, and then spirit said, so why are you here? Why are you in Michigan? And I said, well, I'm, I'm here to, um, we're here to in, in um, we call it tear, what, what's the word? In turn, my father, as well as disperse the the rest of the families, their estate to the family. And I thought, well, this is a personal story. What am I going to have to say? I said, what was your experience when your father passed? What was your experience when your mother passed? And my experience as a medium still is very human, still has, has, has a lot of emotions to it and um, all my childhood stuff still there. But as a medium and the training that I got as a medium, helped me with um, some of the transitions that happened with my parents. So I thought I would share them with you with the idea of how mediumship, especially through the tra spiritualist tradition, is um, available to all of us in many ways that can help us in our lives and help us understand our lives and also come to uh, an understanding that we too will um, beat death or we too will be in heaven or we too will tra transition into a, a higher living and um i can't remember what that's gonna look like i don't know what that's gonna look like but as i have these new relationships um with my my parents in particular my grandparents that have passed um i've learned a lot so li little story um a little couple little stories and then um some teaching when my father um was ill is 91 uh, he passed from um, complications from a fall from a brain injury and he had the last few days of his life in a coma and I flew out um, Christmas Eve because he wanted that kind of attention <laughs> Christmas Eve and sat with him I slept with him next to him in the um, hospital and um, then later we were sent home and then we came back to finish um, we spent Christmas Day together and then came back um, Christmas, the day after Christmas. And I sat there and started to fidget and, and wondered what was my dad's experience right now. And he felt so vulnerable and I felt so sad <coughs> and we were all struggling. And I said, you know, I am a medium, so I can blend with spirit. And he is here in spirit even. And so I blended um, using a technique called City in the Power, but mostly just blended with spirit and then asked, can I blend with my dad? I wasn't trying to make anything happen or hurry anything along. I just was sad and I wanted to feel him. And so at one point during my meditation, I felt this beautiful energy that I had never perceived before in my life um, start to interact with me energetically. <clears throat> There were a couple little words, but mostly it was feelings and personalities and, cur and curiosity, and there was a color with it. It's kind of like this beautiful blue color that was pastel, but and very, um, I've never seen that color blue before. I, maybe in a, in a, a pair, maybe in a stone, a light blue stone. And I, and I realized, I, this is dad. <laughs> I said, oh, I didn't know this is who you were. <laughs> this is, and so we blended for a while. And, um, and, it, and it comforted me and, it, and I felt very good and I was hoping to get a lot of information, nothing, it was just chilling. 
And then um, my guide said to me, that's as far as you can go, that's enough. And I, I kind of came out of my meditation. And as I, I well, of course, when I opened my eyes, there was dad right in front of me. And the sparkly lights came up from him, almost the same color as the colors that I was seeing in my meditation, and just, just kind of twirled up until they disappeared. And I, and I, that was dad leaving his body. And then um, I was guided, you have to leave the room right now. I'm not quite sure why they wanted me to leave the room right now, but they made my bladder really heavy. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, I followed my guidance and um, he was, his physical body actually passed while I was gone and I was disappointed, but then I was guided again by spirit because I have this open, I've already opened this channel and said, you were too close to the passing you had to be out of the room. And if I could understand that, I would explain it to you, but I didn't understand that at all, but I accepted it. And I felt, um, I said the weirdest thing ever. I, I said to my dad, when I came back in the room, congratulations, you finally did it. That was a really hard job, wasn't it? <laughs> it it's really hard for us to leave our bodies and go to the other side for the most part. Um, and that is how my mediumship really helped me um to move with and transition with my my dad's passing it didn't take the pain or the grief or all the underlying feelings away it but it brought some sense it brought some understanding on a level that i um wouldn't have understood otherwise as we prove the continuity of life as mediums we want to bring the details of our loved ones or your loved ones in that's exactly how hey uncle joe would have said it or that's how my mother baked her cookies or that's my father was so, so like that and um it's wonderful to prove the continuity of life because i don't know uncle joe i don't know your father i don't know your mother and here they are talking to me about who they are but you know what it's who they remember themselves to be because in the transition uh, of, like I just described to you of my dad, in the transition to the other side, we remember who we really are. And sometimes who we really are isn't how our loved ones remember us. So, um, and <laughs> since we're spirit learning and growing and developing, the loved ones that I bring through in the way that I described them have maybe kind of developed a little bit. I don't want to say they've moved beyond who they are, their personality's still there, but the things that they've learned, the things that they have done, there's a sad story of a reading that I, I gave this woman um, was very upset. And people ask me, how soon can the spirit communicate with you after they've passed? And I'm like, right away. Um, but there's a reason why sometimes the mediums will say you need six months to a year before they'll come through. It's not that spirit can't come through. And here's the story. It's just that we're not ready to hear from them. And um, she came to me. She's an elderly woman, lost her son. Um, who was in his 50s or 60s, so she was distraught. Her son was her best companion, her best friend, and she um, was so upset with what I was telling her, but he was so excited on the other side, he wanted to say, Mom, this amazing thing happened, and then it was like this, and then it was like this, and then it was like this, and she couldn't hear it, and she was angry. She said I was the worst medium ever because she wanted me to make him alive for her, just like he was two days ago when he was alive. And, and the fellow on the other side was saying, but mom, I wanna tell you about all this stuff. And um, so that's why sometimes mediums say spirits doesn't come till later. So we get sad. We think, well, is, what's happened to my loved one? Why aren't they there? Why aren't they there for me? And um, they are there for you. Are you ready for that? It's probably the biggest question. And how can you get ready for it? Well, it's up to you. That's the time you take. I wanted to tell you another funny story about my when my mom passed, because I can't talk about one without the other. So my mom passed in 2014. They're about five years between mom and dad. It's passing. And um, so I, <coughs> she also had a head injury. I, and I was in Massachusetts driving like bad out of hell. Sorry for saying that on the podium. Um, to kind of get there before she passed, because she wasn't quite gone yet. Um, but, she, but I didn't make it and she didn't make it. And I got to the house and um, it, things had progressed. Her outfit was picked out by the siblings and my dad and um, things were happening. It was very hectic, very chaotic. And I just felt out of it. It's just like, 
she's gone. I was trying to get here before she went and I was sad. And um, so they showed me um, what the outfit she was gonna wear. And um, I just felt outside of myself. I felt like I wasn't myself. And um, one of the things that my sisters were doing was passing out her jewelry to, so we could all wear something of mom's at the funeral. And I, inside of myself, I'm going, this is all wrong. Don't, don't touch that, don't touch that. And I'm like, okay. So I just went and started collecting the things that I felt were important. I, it's not anything I wanted to do. So I collected the things that were important. I put them in a little bag and I hid them. And one of the sisters said, Nancy's hoarding mom's jewelry. And I, but I was still beside myself. And I said, okay, so I'm, this, I'm following something that's guiding me and I'm not quite clear what it is. So um, when we got to the hotel to sleep, I was wide awake. You know, you have all this crazy driving in here. You think you'd fall right to sleep, but I was wide awake. And then I heard my mom's voice and I'd heard my mom's voice before she was in a coma years earlier. I heard her voice and I didn't know what that was her voice. And then so that I heard her voice. Now I know this is my mom's voice. And, and I said, oh, mom, she goes, if you bury me in that outfit, I'll haunt you for the rest of your life. I don't want to wear that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And uh, if you know the Smith family, we're a bunch of stubborn Scots, you know, it's like the outfit was already picked. And I had to figure out, I said, Ma, you're asking, the, you're asking a lot out of me. And I said to her, uh, I'll do the best I can. She goes, you got to do it now. I said, it's four in the morning. Nobody, <laughs> she was, and she kept waking me up. Every... <coughs> Adam, I understand my mom was always the best looking woman in the world, in the room. She had amazing clothes. She had amazing colors. She um, was just very regal. And um, the outfit that everyone had picked was um, a pair of sweatpants and a, and a t-shirt, a beautifully embroidered t-shirt of fishes with it. And, and um, she's like, oh my God. So I, I, <laughs> I got to the house and dad was still in bed. He hadn't slept in days, I know. And I was feeling and I'm knocking on the door. He goes, what's wrong, what's wrong? I said, sit down. <laughs> so, and I'm new to mediumship, my, or, or mediumship, me being a medium is new to my family. And I, how am I going to say this? I said, Dad, you know, Mom was the best dressed woman in every single party. Do you remember how beautiful she would look? He goes, Oh yeah. We were, so I started the storytelling. He told him, he says, Oh yeah. I said, Yeah, and you know that outfit that she wore and this one, and and even just recently, you know, because she was in the wheelchair and it was hard to dress her up. But even just recently, blah blah blah. He goes, Oh yeah. I said, So. You're burying her in sweatpants and a t-shirt. She will haunt you for the rest of your life if you do that to her. And he goes, you know, you're right. And, and it's so I couldn't say mom said this. So we went through, uh, there we were at eight in the morning laying out all of her clothes on their bed and um, picked an outfit out. And then the bag of, that I hoarded, I pulled it out and I said, and this is her favorite jewelry, remember? Oh yeah, she loved that. And so there was my mediumship blending in with my regular day, which is not a regular day, with real life, real time. And um, had to trust my mom to, to step out of the family's regular routine and say, I'm gonna stand up for you on this one. And it's, it's so, so again, mediumship isn't the most popular thing in the world. But when we know something is true, when we know something was right, and we are willing to take that next step to say, there's something that spirit has for me. There's something that spirit has for this group. And we're willing to say that. We um, can, that's, we're proving the continuity of life to ourselves, but we're also proving the continuity of love. We're, pro we're proving that life does go on after these big changes that we think is bringing everything to an end. Um, and uh, that is so important to me. I mean, I, I don't necessarily want to be right. I don't necessarily want to be the best medium ever. I don't want to any of that. But what I want to do is one by one by one, tell you and show you because I can tell you all these stories, but I want to show you how amazing life is and how it's designed in this in this most creative way that you just you wouldn't know it till you saw it till you were in it um when i there's this 
a little while ago, there was this um, movie, I was invited to view a movie that's not out. And the, this is called Life with Ghosts. As a matter of fact, I applied to be one of the hosts for this movie because they're just looking for people to host to, to kind of build up intention and and if you like the idea you maybe david will get that deep for you but um so life with ghosts is a documentary about a, a technique called radical grief treatment which is it's induced after death communication and they um it was developed this is where my notes come in it was developed in the um university of north texas by uh, a group of people um, and therapists that were treating post-traumatic syndrome. And when they were doing this particular technique, it was, they were opening up to, to their spiritual side, to their spiritual self. And they were actually seeing people who had passed before them and they were making great progress. So the therapist said, well, there's a lot of, um, it's called complicated grief. There's a lot of people stuck in this complicated grief. They can't move on from it. And they can be in it for years, for the rest of their life. And we all have know people like that. We could, I'm kind of stuck in some grief myself. Um, so anyways, um, they were starting to treat these people with, with complicated <coughs> grief in a way so they could connect to their loved ones. They could talk to them. And some of the studies that they did, uh, one was a Scandinavian study um, that, study spouses who lost um, their spouses. And that's really deep grief. And 82% of those spouses saw their loved ones in spirit, experienced their loved ones in spirit. And again, um, it wasn't the memory of the person, it was the new experience of the person as they were in spirit. And there were half of the therapists said it was a form of psychosis. And they started to treat these people with drugs, even electro um, shock therapy to get them to not be in that crazy grief where they were having this psychosis and this mental health problem. And the other half, they left them alone. And then there was a group of people that just said, I'm gonna ignore what you're telling me and I know what I saw and that's all there is to it. The ones who embraced spirit had the best transition through their grieving process. There was hope in their lives, there was positivity in their lives, there was growth, they still felt the grief. But the ones who were said, no, that's not real, or, or were there nobody, he's gone forever. There's no, you know, that's it, you just only have your memories, um, struggled. And um, this particular study wants to, and I love this because it's science, wants for us to know that spirit, we do continue on after um, we pass. And, one woman um, was um, good friends with this one woman who was in complicated grief, and she thought all of this was baloney and it was scaring her and she didn't want anything to do with it. In the meantime, it was, it was her mother. In the meantime, her mother who had lost her husband <coughs> after many years was, was doing um, automatic writing and actually talking to him through her journaling and coming up with the funniest stories. And they weren't just memories, they were memories they were sharing together. So there was a little new takes on the, memories and she told her grandkids about it and some of the granddaughters started doing it and the mother was just beside herself. How could you do this to my daughters? How could you back end me? And um, so finally the daughters got together and got the, behind the mother because she hadn't progressed in 10 years um, to go into this program. And so it was a story of how she went through this program and you could see uh, she, saw, she saw her husband so it was a traumatic passing and she talked to him and she was changed. Her life started to unfold. She started to move forward in things that, that she couldn't move forward in before. So her complicated grief began to abate a little, lessen a little bit so that she could have a life while she was alive. Because a lot of times in, when spirit talks to me, they say, we're fine. It's the ones that we leave on the earth plane that we worry about. And, and I think that is so, so true. So um, what I wanted to share with you is, and why I'm saying this wasn't mediums seeing their loved ones, this is people. And you all can experience your guides, you can experience your angels, and you can experience those that you miss, even if you had terrible arguments with them. I have um, terrible arguments with my parents and, I, and I'm like, are we doing this again? And they. <laughs> Or something and they would 
they'll work with me, they'll talk with me. And it's not necessarily in the words they would have used, or the, the words that they would have used are in my memory. So I think that they're saying those things to you, but they're not. I have to be quiet and settle down and shift to a spiritual, a shift to a spirit, shift to an energetic point of view and allow them to show me how they are progressing and how the memories that I have aren't the memories they wanted me to have. So there's been a lot, a lot of healing with this and we all have this we are all this is available to all of us um, it's a little tricky but i really feel want to encourage you if you want to study mediumship or if you want to work with somebody who has these gifts or knows how to do it i really recommend that you explore this for yourself and let life become the depth that it's meant to have so i want to give you a lot of blessings from spirit and um, thanks for letting me speak to you <laughs>